Jōzu jūzu! Many Japanese learners and teachers alike advocate for handwriting Japanese. However, it's undeniable that in 2023, the internet and typing has become a dominant part of our society, and it makes a lot of sense to put double, if not triple, the effort into learning how to type Japanese. This video will be a step-by-step -step on how to type Japanese on a Windows computer as well as offering some shortcuts and tips and tricks. If you would like to know how to type on an Android using a special keyboard that only I have access to, check out this video up here. Alright, so the first thing we should talk about is the two types of keyboards that you can use. You can either use the Romaji keyboard, which is what we're used to, or you can use a special Kana keyboard. The difference is that if you're using the Romaji keyboard, to type something like Ka, for example, you would have to press K-A. While if you were using the Kana keyboard, all you would have to do is press the corresponding Ka button. In order for you to take full advantage of the Kana keyboard, you would need to actually have a Kana keyboard with the Kana keys printed on the keys, or you would have to buy Kana stickers and stick them onto your keyboard individually. Despite some teachers heavily recommending you to use a Kana keyboard, both of these steps are extremely annoying and tedious, and I also don't want to cover up my very nice looking keyboard. Furthermore, based on independent research, I've discovered that 93.1% of Japanese people ranging from ages 10 to 60 actually actually use Romaji input and only 5.1% use the Kana input. The link to this article will be in the description below. So knowing that, I'm going to be using the Romaji input for this video. Step 1. To actually start typing Japanese on a computer, we would first have to install the Japanese IME. To do this, go onto your computer and press the Windows key. Then search for language. And we're looking for language settings. Click on this, and down here is where we can add languages. Simply click on the add a language button and select Japanese. Once you click that, it's gonna initiate a download that might take a while, but you're basically done here. By the way, since we're here, if you would like to change your entire Windows language, you can change the language right over here. To double check whether everything installed correctly, take a look at the bottom right of your taskbar. You should see this Japanese icon over here. If it's not here and it says English, English, simply click on it and change it to Japanese. Now let's go on to some sort of text input website. I'm just gonna put on Deep L for now. Click on the text input area and check the taskbar again. Next to this Japanese input icon, we should either see an A or an A like this. Set this to an A by clicking on it. This will mean you're entering in Romaji mode. Now in this text field, we can enter any Romaji we want. So I wanna type in Watashi. I will simply type in W-A-T-A-S-H-I. As you can see, I've entered in the Kana for Watashi. If I just press enter now, I can finalize the word and I would have been inputted. However, what if I wanted to write the Kanji for Watashi? In that case, I will write again Watashi by pressing W-A-T-A-S-H-I. However, you can see the list of potential things I can input it as, which will allow me to use the arrow keys to point down and I can choose on any of these options. I'm simply going to choose the kanji watashi right there. So this is very useful because many Japanese words have the same kana. Kosho, for example, has all of these kanjis that can be associated to it. You can either press space to choose the next one or use the arrow keys to navigate like so. Quick warning about writing sentences though. Make sure you divide it up into chunks instead of writing the whole thing and then pressing enter. This is because occasionally the sentence gets extremely confusing. This sentence, for example, does not make sense in just kana. It can either be interpreted as or Despite meaning two completely different things, they both share the exact same kana. The way we type these differently is how we divide it into parts. For the first sentence, I wrote kyo wa, then pressed enter. Then isha, enter, ni iku, enter. For the second sentence, I wrote kyo, enter, haisha, enter, ni iku, enter. Now, in order for you to switch back from Romaji mode to English mode, you can either click on that button on the bottom right of your taskbar again, or what I think is more beneficial is to learn a few shortcuts. To switch between English and Japanese IME, press Windows and Spacebar. You know you would have done this right because you can see the little bar pop up on the right side. Next, while you are in Japanese IME, to switch between English and Japanese input, press Shift and Cap Locks. While you are in Romaji input, you can actually set it to enter everything in Katakana. In order to do this, press Alt and Caps. Now everything that you type will be in Katakana. In order to revert this back in the Hiragana, press Control and Cap Locks. Here's a graphic with all four of these extremely important shortcuts. Please print this out, screenshot it, or write it down somewhere because you will need to reference this. This next section will show you how to write special kana, and I have eight of them to show you. The first one is how to write the kana n, and it's actually very simple because all you need to do is press the N button twice. So for example, if I wanted to type the word kakunin, I would write K-A 
K-U-N-I-N-N. Then press space to choose the kanji and enter to confirm. Next, in order to type the little tsu, you can either use an X modifier or type a double consonant. What does that mean? So it's more likely that you're gonna be writing this little tsu in the context of a word. If we take the word hapo, for example, the way we type it is like so, H-A, then we need to type the little tsu. So we're gonna type P-P-O, you. As opposed to hapo, which has no small tsu, because the po here is written as po, we're gonna double the consonant into ppo, which is going to give us the little tsu. In a different instance, we might have hasha. Again, as opposed to hasha without the little tsu, because the sha here starts with an s, we're gonna double the consonant and write h a s s h a. However, if you wanted to write the little tsu all by itself, we're going to use something called the x modifier. And for that, because the tsu is in reality just t u, we can actually put an x in front of the t u, like x t u. You, and that's gonna give us the small tzu just like that. Next is going to be the small yo, yu, and ya. Again, if you wanted to write them standalone, you can use the X modifier. So X, Y, O, X, Y, A, and X, Y, U would give you the small ones. However, in the context of the word, again, ha, sha, the sha, we would simply write S, H, A, and that's gonna give us sha. Kyo, as in today, would be K, Y, O, U. And as you can see, K, Y, O automatically became kyo, like this. Shu, as in weak, would be written as S, H, U, U, and the SHU automatically becomes SHU like this. Number four, in order to get this dash like in the word ramen, we're simply going to write RA minus MENN, -N, and that's going to give us ramen. Number five, in order for you to write small kana like this, you can of course use the X modifier, but another way to do it is actually LALI LULELO, so L A L I L U L E L O. This is kind of rare, but it's going to come in handy in a little bit. Like, for example, if you wanted to write VA VI VU VI VO using the V consonant is extremely rare. You can actually just write V A V I V O V U, etc. However, what's not easy to write is the sound D, as in the app called Discord. If you just try to write D I, you're just gonna get G, which is not it. In order for you to actually write out Discord, you're gonna have to write D E L I, which is going to give you the this, which is pronounced D. Finally, you can actually type some special symbols and here are just a few examples. The first one here, all you need to do is type batsu as in B-A-T-U, then press space and you can input this X. Next is hoshi as in star, you can write H-O-S-I, then press space and choose one of the stars that you like. After that, to get the check mark, you can write cheku, which is C-H-E-K-K-U, then press space to get the check. For the circle, you type maru, M-A-R-U. There's again, quite a few circles for you to choose from. For the triangle, we type sankaku. S-A-N-N-K-A-K-U, multiple triangles here as well. Then we have directional arrows, so we can type ue as an up to get the up arrow, migi to get the right arrow, hidari to get the left arrow, and shita to get the down arrow. For more options on arrows, you can again press spacebar, or you can type yajirushi, which is the Japanese word for arrow, and we can choose stuff like this one, for example. In order to type brackets in Japanese, we can press the square bracket button on our keyboard, which is going to by default give us these brackets. However, if we just press the square bracket once and press space, we can have other options for brackets brackets like all of these here. Alternatively, you can write kakko as in K-A-K-K-O, then press space and we can get some of the brackets here as well. Of course, to write the Japanese comma and period, we simply press the comma button or the period button. And this is only just some of the symbols that you can type. There's plenty more that you can look up. In order for you to practice typing Japanese, I recommend this website called linguajunkie.com. I'll link it in the description. Simply scroll down a bit till you get to here and we're gonna click on the start button. And we're gonna reduce this to one minute just for a quick short test. We're gonna click this and now we can just press space to start. Please don't look at the English here. Otherwise, it's not gonna make any sense to you and it's not gonna help you in any way. If you can read all the kanji, then read just the blue line. But if you can't, read at least just the kana. And just a bit of troubleshooting for a very common problem that people have where the language just changes by itself for no apparent reason. Usually the culprit is a shortcut that nobody ever uses and it would be in your best interest to disable this shortcut. So again, what we're gonna do is press the Windows button and search for language so we can go into the language settings. In the language settings, we're gonna click on the keyboard right up here and then we're gonna click on the language input keyboard right over here. That's gonna pop up this tiny little window. We're gonna set all of these to nothing. Then we're gonna click this button down here and change all of these to nothing as well. Remember to press okay when you're done. This should stop random language changes for the most part. Another extremely common problem is that when you're in a game, for example, if I just type something in the chat like Konnichiwa and I send this and then you try to move, you won't be able to move. And on the top left, you're going to see like 
this bar logging down everything that you're typing. What's going on is that you forgot to switch back into English input. So in order to fix this, just press enter to get this bar to go away. Then press shift caps to switch back into English mode and you should be able to walk around just fine. The reason this becomes a problem is because if I'm on Japanese input mode and I type ASDF, for example, you can see how the SDF is like completely different to standard English. And because we're typing this on a computer, the computer actually recognizes these two as completely different entities. And so when you're in Japanese input, don't type English because it's technically not English. It's just something that looks like English. And to make sure you never find yourself lost for words while typing Japanese, find out how I learned and remembered 16,000 words I went from N5 to N1 in two years by watching this video next. Cheers.